Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is solving for Bayesian-Nash equilibrium. In the last lecture, I defined Bayesian-Nash equilibrium and gave you a quick example. Here, I'm going to teach you the easiest way to find Bayesian-Nash equilibrium for a certain subset of incomplete information games. As you'll recall, Bayesian-Nash equilibrium is substantially more complicated as a solution concept than Nash equilibrium is, because we need to find strategies for each type of player now that we're in these incomplete information settings. And despite the fact that we have this extra wrinkle of complexity, we can still use Nash equilibrium to find Bayesian-Nash equilibrium for strategic form games. In other words, if we have game matrices, if we can write the game in incomplete information using the matrices that we're familiar with, there's a way we can reconfigure those matrices into a different matrix and use the Nash equilibrium solution concepts that we've been working on before to find Bayesian Nash equilibria of the original incomplete information game. To illustrate how we do this, let's look at the following interaction. Here we have two different types of player two and a single type of player one. Player one is facing uncertainty about player two. He doesn't know whether player two is a prisoner's dilemma type or a stag hunt type. With probability 0.2, she's a prisoner's dilemma type, and she has prisoner's dilemma payoffs. With probability 0.8, she's a stag hunt type, and she has stag hunt payoffs. Regardless of player 2's type, player 1 has stag hunt preferences as well. You can most easily see this if you look at the right matrix. In this case, we have player 2 as that stag hunt type, and player 1, by having stag hunt type payoffs regardless, we'll have on that matrix a regular old stag hunt. That's exactly as you should remember a stag hunt from like the third or fourth lecture we ever had for this course way long time ago. In contrast, player two's payoffs are different if she's this prisoner's dilemma type. Now she has prisoner's dilemma payoffs and player one still has the stag hunt payoffs as before. So his payoffs are going to be identical in both of these matrices. Now, before we solve this game using Nash Equilibrium, I want to highlight an important fact about Player 2's strategy if she's the Prisoner's Dilemma type. If she's the Prisoner's Dilemma type, well, she has Prisoner's Dilemma preferences, and so we know she's going to take the Defect strategy, which in this case would be right. Right strictly dominates left. 4 is greater than 3, and 2 is greater than 1. I want you to save that piece of information, put it in the back of your brain for the moment, and let's go back to the original matrices. Now, you can see that there's this clear strategic dilemma for player one. We just talked about how the prisoner's dilemma type of player two wants to defect, take that right strategy. And that's going to be bad for player one. And of course, if it were a prisoner's dilemma and he knew that player two was going to be taking the non-cooperative strategy, well, even if he has those stag hunt preferences, he should probably match. He should choose down in response to player two choosing right as this prisoner's dilemma type. The dilemma for player one, though, the strategic wrinkle that he has in front of him is that if player two is that stag hunt type, both player one and that stag hunt type of player two have common interests. The up left outcome is what's best for both parties. And so player one would really like to be able to play up so the stag hunt type of player two will play left, but he needs to be worried that the prisoner's dilemma type is going to be screwing him over, and so maybe he needs to be prepared for that. Now, given that there is the strategic complexity, what should player one do? How should player one respond to this? Well, let's go ahead and now use Nash Equilibrium to find Bayesian Nash Equilibrium. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to convert this slide, these two matrices, into the single matrix right here. Notice that player one still has just two strategies. That's up and that's down. There's only one type of player one. He doesn't have to update what he's going to be doing based off of which type he is. He doesn't know what type player two is, and there is no different type of player one. So he just has an up or a down choice. Player two is more complicated. Here, we've gotten rid of the different types of player two, and we're combining it into a, just a single player. So we have left, 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 right, right, left, and right, right as our four columns. This is like saying for the left, left column that both the prisoner's dilemma type and the stag hunt type 
are going to be choosing left. If we have left right, then just the prisoner's dilemma type is going to be choosing left, and just the stag hunt type is going to be choosing right. Now, the reason that we can get away with combining the game in this form is for the following reason. Imagine that your boss said to you, hey, in a month or two, we're going to be playing this interaction. And we don't yet know whether we're this prisoner's dilemma type or the stag hunt type. That's something that we're going to be figuring out in the months to come. But regardless of what happens, regardless of which type we end up being, we'd like to have a plan of action that will be optimal in either case. In other words, we need to figure out what we should be doing if we were to turn into the prisoner's dilemma type, and what we should be doing if we were to turn into the stag hunt type. So we're essentially optimizing for that problem, which is a step ahead of where we would be if we were playing it once player two were actually realized as the prisoner's dilemma type or as the stag hunt type. And I'll talk a little bit more about why we can get away with that in a moment, but first I want to fill out this payoff matrix. Let's start with up, left, left. What are the payoffs for this particular outcome? Well, going back to the matrices from before, we see that if player two is choosing left regardless of her type, then both the players receive a payoff of three. So that's very easy to fill in. Other ones aren't going to be so simple. For example, let's look at up, left, right. Going back to the matrices, 20% of the time they'll end up in the up left section on the left matrix, and then 80% of the time they'll be in the up right section of the right matrix. Which means that if we're calculating the expected payoff for, say, player 1, 20% of the time he receives a payoff of 3, 80% of the time he receives a payoff of 0, so 0.2 times 3 plus 0.8 times 0 works out to be 0.6. Player 2's payoff is going to be 3 times 0.2 plus 2 times 0.8, so that's 0.6 plus 1.6, or 2.2. Let's do one more of these. Let's try down, right, right. So now, regardless of which type player 2 is, we're having a right strategy be played, which means we're in the bottom right corner of both of the matrices. In this case, player 1 receives a payoff of 1, regardless of which type player 2 is. So player 1's payoff is going to be a flat 1. And for player 2, 0.2 times 2 plus 0.8 times 1, so 0.4 plus 0.8 equals 1.2, and that's what we fill in right there. You can do this for the other five outcomes, and if you've done it right, and hopefully I've done my algebra right, we will be left with these payoffs here. One quick note, we're ultimately going to be looking for Nash equilibria of this game this 2x4 game that you see on your screen here. We should be very good at finding Nash equilibria by now, which means that the real trick to using this method to find Bayesian Nash equilibrium is properly calculating each of these payoffs. Because this is tedious work, there's a lot of math to do, and if you screw up the arithmetic anywhere, well, your Nash equilibria aren't going to be right, and if your Nash equilibria aren't right because you're not representing the game properly, then your Bayesian Nash equilibria are going to be wrong. So if you're good at Nash equilibrium by now, then the one thing that you really need to be careful about is actually converting the matrix properly in order to get the correct payoffs. Don't screw up the arithmetic. All right, now if you've done the arithmetic right, let's figure out how to solve the Nash equilibria of this game. You might recall from before, I told you to save this in the back of your brain, that the prisoner's dilemma type has a dominated strategy. She would never want to play left if she were the prisoner's dilemma type. That is reflected in the first two columns. In the first two columns, we have player two as the prisoner's dilemma type choosing left. Now, if this game were to recover the fact that the prisoner's dilemma type would never want to play left, then it should still be the case that in this new game, in this game that we constructed, that these two strategies are strictly dominated. And in fact, they are. Let's first look at left-left and compare that to right-left. Here we see that 3.2 is greater than 3 and 0.4 is greater than 0.2. That means right-left strictly dominates left-left. And if you think about why that's the case, then you'll probably start to agree that this is a perfectly fine way of finding Bayesian Nash equilibrium. 
Even though Nash Equilibrium doesn't have multiple types, and Bayesian Nash Equilibrium does, we have essentially sidestepped that problem by adopting these multiple strategies in the column for player two. Left-left versus right-left. Only thing that's different there is the prisoner's dilemma types strategy. In the first column and the third column, we have the stag hunt type choosing left, which means that the stag hunt type's payoff is not going to change from column one to column three. The only thing that can change is the prisoner's dilemma type's payoff, because the prisoner's dilemma type is choosing left in one case and right in the other case. And what we know from before is that right strictly dominates left, so right is going to pay a strictly greater amount to the prisoner's dilemma type. And that's reflected in the fact now that right-left strictly dominates left-left. And that's why this system of using Nash equilibrium will make sure that no type has a profitable deviation. Because if we're looking for a profitable deviation for a particular type, we can compare the columns where we hold the other type's strategy constant and just compare what's going on for a particular type's of, of player's payoffs. And as a result of the fact that this is strictly dominated, that left-left is strictly dominated by right-left, we can use iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies just as we normally would, and we can eliminate left-left. So now we're left with a smaller game, but we can go a little bit further. Left-right should also be strictly dominated. But it's not going to be strictly dominated by right-left. That's flip-flopping both of the players, or both of the types of strategies, I should say. What is going to dominate left-right instead is right-right. That's because we're holding the stag hunt types payoffs constant by holding the stag hunt types strategy constant in both what is column two and column four of the original game. We have the stag hunt type choosing right. The only thing different is the prisoner dilemma types strategy switching from left to right and right is going to pay a strictly greater amount for the prisoner's dilemma type than left. And sure enough, 2.4 is greater than 2.2, and 1.2 is greater than 1. Which means we can eliminate left-right, and we're left with just this 2x2 two two game. Well, from here, there aren't any more dominated strategies, and if you were to spend the time on your own, you can easily calculate the Nash equilibria of a 2x2 two two game. So if you mark best responses, that's what you get there. And of course, if there are only two Nash equilibrium of a game, you should be concerned that you're missing something because most, in fact, almost all games have an odd number of equilibria. So you should look for equilibria and mixed strategies. And sure enough, the mixed strategy Bayesian Nash equilibrium is going to be for player one to choose up with probability one half and for player two to choose right left with five eighths. So just to be very clear what's going on here, by labeling the best responses and having mutual best responses in the top left outcome, this is saying that there's a Bayesian Nash equilibrium in which player one chooses up and player two as the prisoner's dilemma type chooses right and as the stag hunt type chooses left. For the bottom right outcome, down right right, we have player one choosing down and both types of player two choosing right. In the mixed strategy Bayesian Nash equilibrium, player one chooses up with probability one half. And here's the tricky thing. Right left is being played with probability five eighths and right right is being played with probability three eighths. Notice that right is identical in both of the first strategy that's listed which means that the prisoner's dilemma type in this mixed strategy, this mixed strategy Bayesian Nash equilibrium, that prisoner's dilemma type is still always choosing right. It's only the stag hunt type that is mixing. Five eighths of the time, the stag hunt type is choosing left and three eighths of the time, the stag hunt type is choosing right. So in fact, the uh, prisoner's dilemma type is playing a pure strategy. It's only of player two the stag hunt type that's mixing. Now, one final thing to note about what's going on here. Imagine that we have this particular outcome occurring. This is a Bayesian Nash equilibrium where player one chooses up and player two as the prisoner's dilemma type chooses right as the stag hunt type chooses left. From player one's perspective, it looks like player two is mixing. 
it looks like she's sometimes playing right and sometimes playing left. The types themselves are not mixing. The types are playing pure strategies. But from player one's perspective, it looks as though we see mixing. And this is going to preview something that we're going to encounter later in this unit, where we're going to find out that Nash equilibria and mixed strategies, one alternative interpretation for it isn't that the players are actually mixing, but rather that there are multiple types of a player, and each of those types is pursuing a pure strategy, but by virtue of the fact that there's some sort of uncertainty that we can't observe, it appears as though that a single player is mixing, rather than multiple types playing pure strategies. Okay, so that wraps up this lecture on using Bayesian, Na rather using Nash equilibrium to find Bayesian Nash equilibrium for these matrix games. There are a whole bunch of other types of incomplete information games out there that we can't so easily express in matrices. And so what we're going to be looking at in later lectures in this unit is how to solve such games, other methods of finding Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you next time. Take care.